strong start for the Indian market. The indices open at life highs, continue to hold on to those gains. In fact, metals and financials as well as healthcare stocks rally too. Auto stocks trade weak, while broader markets underperform today. Kodak Institutional Equities downgrades Loris Labs to sell, says troubles over pricing of uh, some of their products are underappreciated. The brokerage also sets a target price of around 350 rupees a share. NBCC surges. Uh, the stock trades higher after the company has won two orders worth nearly 271 crore rupees. Vedanta goes ex-dividend today. The company had earlier announced its third interim dividend in FY23 of around 17 rupees 50 price a share. And ETV promoter RRPR will issue 99.5% equity to Adani Group subsidiary VCPL, paving the way for the Adani Group to take over the control of NDTV. Hello and welcome to Chartbusters. I'm Naishu D'Souza and joining me as always is Mangalam Malu. Well, Mangalam, uh, the markets, uh, they have only one direction on their mind. That's upward. Mm. However, just looking at the data points, I think we're heading into that congestion zone of around 18,650 to around 18,700. Let's see whether or not we can get past that. But the mid-cap index is doing a relative underperformance, though it's cut it down. In the last few minutes, it moved into the green. So I'll be tracking the mid-cap performance actually more than the headline index because uh, you know the last two days were quite good. And now, in fact, we're seeing a bit of a recovery from the day's low. But to help us out with an index call, well, we're joined by uh, Shilpa Raut. Hi, Shilpa. Good morning. Um, what's your view on the index? Uh, how would you trade it? Do you believe you'd be pause for breath? Or do you believe that we have uh, more tailwinds and, in fact, we could move higher? Go ahead. Good morning, Nigel and Manglam. Uh, there's nothing much to say about indices. Actually, Nifty is having a very strong support at 18,500 and uh, the resistance and the congestion, whatever term we may use, it is at 18,800. So the range is between 18,500 to 18,800. Likewise, Bank Nifty is sustaining well above 43,000 today. So I think, you know, it's about time we'll test 44,500 zones very soon. Uh, of course, below 43,000, we will see a fresh, uh, you know, trading entry at around 42,000 zones. But as long as we're holding 43,000, there's nothing to worry about. You'll see targets of 44,500 very soon. All right, we take that uh, point on the Nifty Bank as well as the Nifty. But uh, a lot of individual stocks actually are doing extremely well and a bunch of them actually belong to the FMCG pack. Case in point, HUL, that's moved to the high point of trade. Titan's doing extremely well. From the broader markets, we have Dabur, United Spirits, Colgate, all of them doing extremely well. Colgate, in fact, is among the top gainers uh, in just the last few odd minutes. Uh, we had uh, spoken to Prabha Narsimhan in her first conversation who said that, you know, they are looking to improve volumes going forward and also keep an eye out on their market share. So that's a stock which is doing well. Uh, Shilpa, individual stocks, what do you have on your radar for us today? Uh, I have, you know, one from Pharma, that is Auro Pharma, trading at around 473, 474 in futures now. With a stop loss of 465, I'm looking for a targets of 495 to 510. And the second one is I have Aditya Bila Fashion, so that is trading at around 315 in the futures. Uh, with a stop loss of 310, you should look for targets of 323 to 328 berries. Okay, all right. Uh, Shilpa, thanks so much uh, for stopping by and filling us in with your quick take on the index as well as filling us in with a couple of the stocks as well. Time to shift focus to our special segment where we get you a few ideas for profit from Money Control Pro. Sachin Paul of moneycontrol.com joins us to talk about a stock that he's tracking very closely. Sachin? The stock in focus is Amber Enterprises, which is hovering close to its 52 week lows at this point of time. Well, the final performance of the business has been quite lackluster due to high competitive intensity within the AC industry. That coupled with the high inventory levels at the dealers, as well as uh, input cost pressures have been weighing on the final performance of the business. Uh, that being said, the competitive intensity in the sector is expected to remain at current levels. Receiving cost pressures as well as uh, the normalization of inventories at the dealer level should pave the way for margin recovery in the coming summer season. Well, the business remains also poised to benefit from the structural tailwinds in the AC industry and also the Make in India initiatives of the government. Also, the company uh, is expected to commence a new capacity which should pave the way for volume growth uh, in the AC segment uh, in the coming two to three years. On the export front as well, the company is um, strengthening its foothold within the market and uh, the uh, strengthening order book should uh, translate into higher export uh, revenues in the coming two to three years. 
Overall, the business remains a very structural uh, growth story on uh, the AC industry and investors can therefore look forward to go long on the stock at current levels. All right, uh, uh, Sachin, thanks a lot for that. With that, we'll take a short break. On the other side, we'll get chatting with the management of MM Forging, uh, uh, Vidya Shankar Krishnan, who joins us to discuss the company's second quarter earnings. But importantly, what's the way ahead? Welcome back. Let's get chatting with uh, the management of MM Forgings. Vidya Shankar Krishnan, who's the vice chairman and managing director of the company, joins in to de- detail their second quarter earnings. Uh, remember, the company's uh, volumes in the second quarter or for the first half of this year close to around 35,000 uh, tons. The company is tracking to clock around uh, 75 to 80,000 tons this year itself. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for joining in, sir. Um, you know, Can you give us a sense of realizations? What were the kind of realizations that you had in the second quarter, was your EBITDA per turn maintained at the 34,000 mark? I mean, what's the outlook that you have from here? Morning, Mangalam. Morning, Nigel. We are uh, uh, looking at about 34,000 uh, rupees per ton, but approximately on an overall basis, uh, because EBITDA is a very complex number, hmm. we are looking at about uh, 18 to 19% this quarter, okay. this half year. And going ahead, uh, look to maintain... Uh, these levels with an upward bias because uh, export uh, overall freight rates are coming down globally. Uh, Hopefully uh, there will be some uh, sanity in uh, oil prices Mm. and with all this there should be uh, it all should be positive for uh, margins. Okay. Uh, Hi, good morning. Yeah. Riding on the back of strong growth. So let's talk about growth then Mr. Krishnan. Good morning. You know the street believes that you could be a re-rating candidate. So numbers and delivery is going to be most crucial. Give us a couple of numbers uh, then. You said growth is going to be uh, you know, a focus area as well. So what yeah. kind of a revenue number are you looking to end FI23 with? Will it be in the vicinity of around 1,400 crores? And also yeah. earlier, I think in the following year, you were talking about hitting around 1,800 crores. Do you stick to that if you could give us the revenue outlook as well as the volume trajectory? Go ahead. Last year, we did about 60, 62,000 tons of uh, sales. This year, we would expect to end uh, between 72 and 76,000 tons, closer to 75, and uh, a revenue of around uh, 1,400 crores on a consolidated basis. Okay. With uh, the next year in FY24, uh, mm-hmm. we would look to cross 1,700, 1,800 crores, or at least reach those levels. All right, that makes sense. Uh, you had a target of 2,000 crores coming in by FI25, so that ties in with the glide path. That, that, you generally, that yeah. generally looks to be on cards, uh, Maglam. All right, and currently your uh, functioning capacity is 1,30,000 tons, right? So this year you will end, you said, 75,000 tons in terms of uh, volume. So that would still be around a little over 50% in terms of utilization. By when do you get to that 100% utilization mark? Is that FI25 as well? Firstly, uh, this lack and 30,000 tons will be established only by end of the year. Okay. So, uh, we would we are right now at lack and 20,000 tons. So, on that, we would be about 50, close, above 60% in terms of uh, capacity utilization for this year. And uh, at the end of the year, we expect to be at lack and 30,000 tons in capacity. Effectively, the capacity will come in only into the next year. Okay. We wow. would be uh, expecting to achieve this... Uh, Close to this capacity, like in 10,000 tons plus by FY25, positively. Okay, all right. So by FY25, we're looking at 1 lakh uh, 10,000 tons in terms of the total sales volumes. In your yeah. industry, sir, just a question. Do you Can you function at 100% uh, since your capacity is going to 1 lakh 30,000 or are there some restrictions where you can only function at around 85 to 90%? See, what we've also been doing consistently over the understanding the nature of the industry and the cyclicity of our industry, we have factored that into our capacity. So I would say a capacity of lakh and 20,000 tons for MM forgings is a, is a distinct uh, feasibility. Right. You know, a couple of other uh, growth triggers for you. The first one was uh, Kafoma, where you expected to cross that 100 crore mark in terms of revenues. Just wanted to understand by when do you do that and what happens to the margins out there as well. Uh, what is your target level? 
And the second one was off highway, which is currently about 1%. You expected it to go to up to 5% of your overall contribution. Kafoma has uh, certainly uh, brought in a lot of new business for MM forgings. Per se, uh, some backward integration into, into forgings and uh, also forward integration into uh, crankshafts. So, uh, Kafoma effectively uh, has brought in a decent amount of business. By FY24, we should be knocking at between 75 to 100 crores uh, as a result of uh, Kafoma. Okay. And, this... and uh, looking, looking at the... Uh, what was the other thing that you had... Uh, Off-highway is what I want to say. Off-highway, yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, taking off on the same uh, theme, we currently run at about 6% on uh, off-highway as it is. Uh, because of the foray into the farm sector hmm. and also mining, etc., globally. So, MM Forging stands at about uh, 5 to 6% on the off highway, uh, as that's on target. We expect to clock around 7 to 8% in the by FI 25. FI 25, all right. Okay, all right. What about the EV space, sir? The street was very excited. So, give us numbers. You know, that's what I'm looking forward to. How much are you going to invest in this EV vertical? And by when do revenues start coming? Is it a story of FY24 where we see some bit of revenue contribution? Or is it a story of FY25? Whichever year it is, what is the likely revenue contribution? We are planning to invest uh, a minimum of about 100 crores over the next 24 months in the AV space. This will take us to, uh, will take us to about, we're planning initially a capacity of about say 50,000 units. In FY24, we would expect to clock anywhere between 10 to 25 crores of uh, revenue. And in FY25, between 50 and 100 crores of uh, revenue on the EV segment. 50 and 100. 50 pushing and ahead uh, over there too. Will it be profitable, sir? I mean, uh, th there would have to be a break-even point, right? For EV or initially you'll be focusing on revenues and then gradually, you know, that moves into profitability. Or from the word go itself, will it be, uh, you know, a bit positive? I would say uh, I'm a big believer in uh, in uh, EBITDA positivity from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is the age and uh, day uh, time where even uh, 1,000 crore, 2,000 crore businesses uh, do not make uh, positive EBITDA. Yes. And uh, the street uh, kinds of lords their uh, <laughs> performance. So uh, I, I don't subscribe to that view at all. Mm. So I believe it's some amount of scale. At the same time, overheads need to be covered. Mm. And that will happen at some level of scale. So I would expect that from around 25 to 30 crore onwards, definitely we should be looking at a bit of positive. And if you exclude uh, development costs, mm. I think we should be a bit of positive from day one. Otherwise, there's just no point in in uh, doing the business. Money might as well be kept with shareholders and banks and uh, safe away from organizations that, that burn it down. Well, uh, old world sage advice out there, you know, uh, no point being in businesses which don't make profits. So your shareholders will like that. Uh, just uh, a, a few things with regards to demand. I mean, you are targeting a fair amount of uh, tonnage coming in this year and next year, etc. as well. But most of the global outlook is not particularly optimistic. There is signs of, uh, you know, slowdown. A lot of people using the word recession, grim situation. Do you see that from your clients' end as well? What can you uh, sense in terms of demand? Things are muted globally. 100% I, I would agree. It would be an undeniable uh, fact. And uh, Europe particularly is uh, very, very uh, sluggish. Having said that, if the conditions in Europe persist, uh, particularly on the energy front, uh, what will happen is supplies from European forgers to European customers will come down really sharp. And that poses an opportunity for MM forgings. All USA right. is expected to chug along, albeit with a with a downward or or a stable trend as far as uh, the economy is concerned. However, our big bet is on India, mm. and last few years we've been consistently saying that our domestic sales will will zoom up to about sixty five percent in the next few. And between now and FY twenty five, that's where we are seeing a lot of action, and that's where a, a lot of investment is being uh, focused on for the domestic market. So considering the tailwinds that we have in terms of development made in the last 24 months, mm. 24 to 36 months, and which we're continuing to make and invest in the coming uh, 24 months, mm. I would say that uh, broadly these numbers should hold. 
Okay, you know, there are a couple of rules uh, in uh, finance that I learned early on, uh, Mr. Krishnan. One is, if you're doing business, make it sure it's profitable. And the second factor is, debt is only a near-term friend. Later on, it becomes a bit of an enemy. For you, you're very comfortable right now. But given that you have CAPEX, you have, uh, you know, some various investments that you're looking to, ma uh, to make, what is your current net debt for the consolidated entity? And where do you see net debt peaking out at? Currently, uh, net debt would be around uh, 4, 450, 500 crores. And we would expect that to be fairly constant over the next uh, 24 months. Probably inch up a little to around 600, 650 crores. And then claw back uh, uh, over time. So we are looking at, uh, at these numbers are pretty stable. Considering that uh, this debt on a percentage of EBITDA hmm. uh, is not a very uh, significant number. We are well within uh, managing limits. And uh, our uh, strength is that we have uh, two years of repayments uh, to cushion us through hmm. any uh, kind of downturn should it happen. But at the same time, we are quite positive that uh, we should see positive numbers over the next two years. Take that point. Uh, 450 to 500 crores the book on, uh, debt on your books and you're looking at it peaking out between 600 650 crores, which would be pretty manageable given the EBITDA as well as the revenue guidance that you've given us. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, sir, for joining in and giving us your outlook on the business. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Wish you good luck for the remainder of this year, but more importantly, the next year and the year after that as well. Uh, with that, we'll simply do a short break on the other side, get you more on the markets and individual stocks. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Index up closer around 80 points. Feeling good out there. But I'll tell you what, a couple of stocks in the broader markets are calling for our attention. Darbar, well, that one suddenly has spiked up. It's up closer on 5% as we speak. And that's come out of nowhere. Bandhan Bank as well. That's the other one in there from, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, from its peers. It's not made any big wealth out there. But that one as well is flying away as we speak. And United Spirits is another one that's doing pretty well. So just take a look at some of these stocks. Spiking up to the high point of the day. Fair bit of traction, Mangalam, in the broader markets. Fair bit of traction, Nigel. And in the broader markets itself, since you pointed Dabur, you know, all the FMCG stocks are doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. The biggest reason for that perhaps could be the fact that everyone is, you know, everyone was pinning their hopes for demand recovery in the second half of this year. Between the first quarter and the second quarter, we had inflation. So everyone thought that maybe, you know, margins uh, will get compressed because of uh, the high cost inventory that these companies were sitting on. But now high cost inventory is out of the way. Oil prices are at a near 11 month low. Mm. And now demand is expected to pick up because we are post festive season and 60% of the demand obviously comes in the second half of this year. So what you were pinning yourself for at the start of this year has now come about. This is the time. So maybe the street is looking at these FMCG stocks after an underperformance over the last three months or so. So maybe, which is why we're seeing some bit of a pickup out there as well. But let's talk about another stock which has been buzzing around. That is uh, BHE, that on account of a note coming in from Dam Capital. Vivek joins in with the takeaways. Vivek. Well, uh, that's right. So uh, BHEL is the stock in focus. Uh, the stock has been doing extremely well in terms of price action of late. And uh, Dan Capital has released a report where they have actually spoken about uh, uh, where they had an investor meet with the management and, you know, some of the key takeaways are as follows. So what they're saying is that the company has continued to maintain its positive outlook for orders, mainly this based on coal-based uh, coal power plants. And this is something that earlier, you know, uh, BHL actually saw a bit of a derating due to India's uh, stated stance of not adding too much thermal capacity. However, uh, BHL at this point of time is seeing quite a bit of ordering activity on that front. Also, what they're saying is that, you know, the company has spent the market at almost 4 to 5 gigawatt of incremental thermal ordering every year till FI27. And what they're saying is that the lower competition in this particular segment actually is aiding the margin growth for them. Along with that, the company is also pursuing a very large international order in Southeast Asia, likely to get this particular order by the second half of the year. Uh, also, what they're saying, in terms of newer tendering activity, the tendering terms are slightly easier for the company, and which is why they believe uh, that working capital also will improve. Along with that, you know, they are expecting a coal gasification order as well. This is worth almost 8,000 crore, and this will come in from Coal India, likely to be finalized by the, either this year or in the first half of your FI24. Uh, along with that, in order to reduce its dependence on thermal, they are also going ahead and building various other capacities as well. And the company has set a target of almost rupees 2 trillion 
billion dollar worth of order inflow what they're actually targeting. So some very strong commentary. Uh, you know, the core business of thermal uh, power, uh, power building also is doing well. Along with that, you know, the company is actively targeting newer business segments. And DM Capital, you know, since the time they've actually initiated the coverage on the stock, stock is up almost 35%. And also keep in mind, today this particular stock is in the FNO band. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot uh, for that uh... Uh, you know, Vivek and joining in. Uh, well, uh, Dam Capital, the analyst is Mohit Aisi, the author, and uh, seems he has got it bang on because post the initial uh, report, the stock is up close to around 30% odd. But let's move on. And earlier today, we caught up with Rana Gupta of Manulife uh, Investment Management. He gave us his views on the developments in China as well as the forecast on Indian markets. Let's hear him out. China and their COVID in the response to something we have been discussing throughout this year. And frankly, <laughs> Uh, none of us are any wiser on that. So I think uh, we would rather focus on the long-term fallouts on the emerging markets uh, because of the situation. And one of the fallouts which we can see see with some degree of certainty is the, global, uh, the, the, the restructuring of the supply chains, which means that the global multinational companies incrementally they're putting capacities outside China in countries like you know, across emerging markets, whether it's Mexico, Vietnam, India, Indonesia. And we will be pretty optimistic on that trend. Well, on that note, we'll have to wrap up on this edition of Chartbusters with news that the Nifty is at the high point of the day. Trading R takes all the action forward.